Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. It's been an awfully long week, but thank God we're ending it tonight with two pieces of good news. The first, Great Britain is an independent country again, as it has been for most of the last thousand years. Brexit has gone through. So cheers to our friends in the UK. In this country, the impeachment farce is almost over. That's our good news. The president will be acquitted. Now, we knew that from the first day, of course, which is one of the reasons this whole overhyped charade was always such an insulting waste of time. But now it's official. Even the wettest Trump-hating Republicans in the Senate are thoroughly sick of this. They want it over. And yet, because once started, nothing in Washington ends easily. The process continues on like a ghost ship. Here was the scene on the Senate floor today. Those are actually retail drunk shoppers in box stores on Black Friday, but it's the same sickness at work. Mobs of desperate people grasping at trinkets to fill a void within. It's sad to watch. Let's try to find the actual tape from the Senate. Once again, right theme, wrong video. Jerry Springer wasn't really in the Senate this week, but Jerry Nadler was. Check out what happened last night when Chief Justice Roberts asked prosecutors to answer a, answer a final question. Nadler and Adam Schiff raced to the podium, all but elbowing each other out of the way to get one last blessed moment on C-SPAN. Watch this tape and ask yourself if you have ever seen anything with less dignity. Could you please respond to the answer just given by the President's counsel and provide any other comments the Senate would benefit from hearing before we adjourn for the evening? Jerry. 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 Mr. Chief Justice, members of the uh, Senate. I want to be on TV. No, I do. These people are buffoons. That clip really was the whole impeachment from start to finish. Narcissistic, degrading, pointless. A nation as great as this one deserves more, but that would require impressive leaders. At some point, maybe next week, we'll look back on this whole chapter in shame. But for a few more days, at least, the hysteria will continue. In fact, it will likely increase, believe it or not. The media class seem to be just figuring out that Trump will not be removed from office before the Super Bowl. You've always known that, obviously. They had no idea. They're literally stunned. Over on MSNBC, a person called Mara Gay declared that if the results of the last election aren't nullified immediately, democracy is dead forever. Think about that for a minute. She clearly hasn't. It's kind of hilarious, actually. Watch her tantrum. What's on trial is not just Donald Trump right now. What's on trial is the rule of law. What's on trial is our democracy. I mean, what a sad, sad moment after, you know, 300 plus years of democracy. And by the way, truth matters. I mean, as a journalist, I just think that's what separates us from Russia, from Venezuela. If we don't stand up for truth now, it will be too late. It will be too late. As a journalist, as a journalist. <laughs> and that was your tip that Mara Gay isn't just some fake democratic strategist they invited on a cable show like they often do. She's, in fact, a member of the New York Times editorial board. Not that, that makes her a journalist, but she's still the best they can muster. Ponder that over the weekend. The politics editor of TheRoot.com, meanwhile, told viewers that now that Donald Trump is staying in office till November, nothing can stop him from becoming an authoritarian dictator. Imagine Donald Trump deciding sometime in June, well, I heard this conspiracy theory that a whole lot of illegal immigrants voted in California. So I've decided that during the presidential election, California has to go under, undergo extreme vetting because we can't trust their votes. We're going to shut down voting in a state. This is literally the kind of thing he will do now. <laughs> Got that? Trump is, quote, literally going to cancel the election in California, our biggest state. Okay, Jason Johnson. Let us know when he tries. People like Johnson are saying things like this because they are so shocked their brains no longer work. They really thought Trump was going to be fired 
at the end of impeachment. They thought a five-minute phone call about Hunter Biden's corruption would be enough to undo an election that 136 million people voted in. <laughs> like a creepy old man in a porno theater, the press and the Democratic Party allowed their fantasies to overstrip reality. But they're about to be shocked back to consciousness very soon. The Iowa caucuses are just three days from now. Bernie Sanders is likely to win there. His only real rival is a man who should be having dinner at 4.30 at Golden Corral. Party leaders don't really want either one of them, Sanders or Joe Biden. Their plan, the plan in Washington, is to force voters to back Michael Bloomberg, a Napoleonic billionaire known for screaming at people who drink the wrong soda. None of it seems very appealing. The Democratic Party is in trouble. It's about to collide with itself. And by the way, that didn't need to happen. If Democrats had just spent the last three years coming up with, I don't know, a credible plan to lower housing prices or raise middle class wages or fix the student loan crisis, they might be winning the election. But they didn't do that. Instead, they tried the easy way out. They wasted their energy on wild conspiracies about Russia and Ukraine. And while they were doing that, their unhappiest but most energetic activists forced their candidates to take lunatic positions on abortion, guns, race, gender, climate, you name it. Positions that are way out of the mainstream, even among Democrats. It adds up to a disaster, and they know it's a disaster. That's why they're so upset. The good news is, as awful and stupid as impeachment was, in the end, it hurt the people who did it most of all.